Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, this is a new week and guess what? We are in the last week or last few days to the end of the month of August. Praise God. And then we're going to be stepping into the ember months. And, and now, you know all those things you say about the ember months. Don't let anyone scare you. Praise God. God loves you and he's got great plans for you. Praise God. And, and see, it is his plans that are more important. The plan of God is the most important thing in this world. If you would just connect with his plan, forget about the experiences of men. Forget about all the news of doom and prophecies of doom that they tell you. If you would just connect with God's plan and allow the Holy Spirit guide you, tell you this truth, your life will be safe in Him. Praise God. So it's going to be a great week, trust me, because of what the Lord has laid in my heart to share with you as regards His love for you. And He's manifesting that love. But before we we'll go into today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Remember, you must do this every day because it's daily. David was smart enough. He knew this truth. So he said he daily loads us with benefits. Did you notice he said daily? But what about today's own? So are you ready to join your faith with mine as we release it right now to receive what God has apportioned for today? Say with me, say, Father, I believe in your love for me. So I know you have released today's benefits, my daily bread. I receive it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, sometimes, you know, people ask, why do I have to say this? Why can't I say it in my mind? Why can't? No, I'll tell you the truth. Because of the angels. Because of the angels. That's why we make confessions. That's why we make declarations. It's not because God will not hear when we say it in our hearts. No, He would hear. Now, the truth is, before we even pray, God has already answered because He's heard us already. But why do we then need to speak out? I said because of the angels. Now, God has planned everything for you. But when you begin to speak it, just like he said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he had redeemed from the hands of the enemies. Now, why would he say let the redeemed of the Lord speak out? I know many years ago we used to sing a song, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And we all thought he was saying we should all say S-O, you know, so. <laughs> now that's our ignorance. That we had, you know, so we say, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So, let the redeemed of, so we, we, we just felt the song leader is leading us to all say so. So, it's God, you know, ignorance. <laughs> but the song was beautiful. But you see, why was he saying the redeemed of the Lord should speak out? That's actually what he was saying. Speak out. Say what he has done for you. Why? Because of the angels. The angels carry the script. But they don't know where you are at yet. When I mean where you are, not your physical location. I'm talking about the knowledge that you carry. Because see, angels don't give you knowledge. You are to come with knowledge. And where do you get your knowledge from? From the Holy Spirit. So you are supposed to be walking with the Holy Spirit. Then you have angels at your service. The Holy Spirit gives you information. Then when you carry out those informations or instructions from the Holy Spirit, the angels are made to understand that you have come to the place of understanding and knowledge. Then by that knowledge, because see, the, remember, David said, for he has given his angels charge consigning us. See, what's that charge? God have given the angels command where you are concerned. And those commands are like codes. They read like this. You know, when you're writing codes, computer codes, programming codes, you say, when this is done, this should react like this. 
When this goes up, or when this touches this, this should do this. See that? Now that's how the angels have been giving codes concerning you. See? So the angels are waiting for you to say certain things. When you say those things, then they react. You see that? So when the Holy Spirit begins to tell you what to say, you don't just say it in your mind. <laughs> mm. ah, Holy Spirit, thank you. No, you speak out. When you speak out, the angels know that you have come to that place. So they open the next chapter of your life. And they begin to deal with you according to that knowledge. So when you begin to declare, I'm healed, I'm healed. Now, why are you declaring I'm healed? Are you declaring I'm healed because you read it in the scripture or because you heard it from the Spirit of God? You see, that's where the difference comes in. Now, if you just carry the scripture, anybody can carry the scriptures, the Bible, I mean, and open to um, Isaiah, you know, chapter 53 and begin to read and say, by his stripes, I'm healed. By his... Now, you can just be doing that as a recitation. But then, there is the day the Holy Spirit will speak to you. Now, it's already written. So it's, a, it's not a hidden information that by the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. It's already written. But how does it come into effect? I'll tell you. When you, I was telling, sharing that with you last week, when you come into partnership with the Holy Spirit and you begin to question Him concerning your healing, then he will speak his word to you. He will give you an instruction. He will tell you something. Now, when you hear that thing, what do you do with it? You speak it out. When you speak it out, the angels around there know that uh, this one, it's time to walk in his healing. And they begin to create the opportunities. They begin to make the things work. Sometimes they cause certain knowledge to come to you. You don't know what goes on behind the scene. You don't know. You don't know. I pray God will open your eyes once to see what goes on behind the scene of your life. You just think you're just here by yourself. Oh, I don't know. Nobody loves me. Nobody does. Nobody has given anything to me. Nobody has done. Meanwhile, God, I was sharing these things with you last week. Last week, Friday, I think. I was giving an example. When a child gets up and begins to walk by himself, you scream, you the parent, you're excited. Why are you excited? Because the child has figured it out. Because that child has been seeing men walk, you know, people walk, and then, you know, and then he crawls. And he's seeing people walk and wondering, how do they walk? How do they do it? How do they do this thing? Same thing with everything about your life. When you see your children begin to come of age to take responsibility concerning certain things, you're excited. Why? What excites you the most is that they have been able to figure it out. You see, that's exactly how God is excited when we figure things out. Now, here's the point. We don't just figure things out by ourselves. We walk with the Holy Spirit who fill our hearts with wisdom. But now this is where our brain comes in. Our brain, because he gave us a brain. So he didn't give us a brain to keep it as spare. No, he gives us information. We use our brain. Now our brain contains our memory and, and knowledge that have been stored in there. By the things he tells us, we use our brain and begin to analyze them. Then because your mind is positively fixed on him, not withdrawing, having that withdrawal's mindset, you begin to analyze the things he has said to you. And then you figure it out. Say, whoa. And that's what we do when we study scriptures also. We look at it and say, whoa, wow, hold on. You know, for example, I said earlier, David knew. I said he daily loads us with benefits. David said this many years ago. And Jesus comes around and he says, hey, take note thought for your life, what you will eat or clothes, what you will put on, okay? And then, now you're a good student of the scriptures, so you begin to study. I think Jesus said, give us this day our 
daily bread. Mm. Our daily bread. David said he daily loads us with benefits. Could Jesus be saying something David already knew? And that will begin to bring you to understand that nothing is really new. Nothing. Oh, nothing is new. There is no new word God is giving today. There is no new command he's giving today. Everything he has already given. Whoa. So we are the ones that are in the dark, not him. Praise God. Now you understand when he said the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Wow. There's nothing new God is doing. No. He's only bringing you to understand what he has done. And that's what the Holy Spirit does in our lives. So when he tells you, get up and do this, the angels are waiting for you. When you get up and begin to declare and do, sometimes we pray. Why do you think you're praying? And then suddenly the Holy Spirit will put a phrase in your mind. You will just hear a phrase. It might be a prayer point. So I've seen that. It happens to me a lot. I'm praying concerning something. I just hear him say, pray like this. Or I just hear a phrase, this, this, this. Sometimes the phrase might be a scripture that is written. But he said, at that moment, I did not remember the scripture. No, the scripture was given to me by the Holy Spirit. What do I do at that time? I speak it out. When I speak it out, the angels are aware that I have come to that place. Now, when the Holy Spirit gives you any scripture, I want you to hear me and hear me good. When the Holy Spirit gives you any scripture, even though it is written in the Bible, take this from me. That scripture has been given to you to fulfill. Yes, that scripture has been given to you to fulfill. You know, Jesus went to his hometown in, 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 Luke, chapter, in Luke chapter 4. And they, they gave it, the Bible said, as his custom was. You see, meaning that's not the first time he was doing that. He did that growing up. Now, you know, at the age of 12, he was already arguing with the scribes and the, and the Pharisees. So he, they, they knew him to be a good reader. They knew him to love to read the scriptures. So he became a lay reader. That's the same thing they call them today. So when it was time for that first lesson or second, whatever lesson it was, he was called, oh, Jesus, you're in town. Yeah, yes. Oh, yeah. Come and do your duty. Oh, thank you, sir. And that day they gave him the book. Now, I don't know if they used to give them where to read. But this particular day, if they used to give them what to read, this particular day, Jesus did not follow that script. He heard from the Lord, Isaiah chapter 61. And so he opened the book because the Bible said he found, see? So it wasn't given to him. What I mean, it wasn't given to him. The scribe didn't give it to him. Let, let's read that scripture. Luke chapter 4. So you get it in clear perspective. I love to be practical with these things. Now, verse 16, Luke chapter 4. And when he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, remember, that's where he was brought up. When he came to Nazareth, where he was brought up, and as his custom was, he was brought up there. So this was his, his, Jesus' his custom. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. So his custom was to go to the synagogue and read the scriptures. Now when you say read the scriptures, not just privately now. You know, when the, the service is going on, he stood in line as one of those who will read the scriptures. So, and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, 
he found the place where it was written. See? So they didn't give him, they just gave him the scroll of Isaiah. Now they didn't have much. You remember in those days, they had all the prophets. They had them in books. See? So they could have given him Jeremiah. They could have given him the Psalms. They could have given him any of those books. But because that day was a very special day in the life of Jesus, it was no, it wasn't by chance that he was handed over the book of Isaiah. And Jesus took that book of Isaiah and began to open. And he found, see, he found. So he knew in his spirit what he was looking for. So he began to search and search and search. Now, you know, then they didn't have it written in chapters and verses like we do now. So you, you take a great deal of searching praise God, if you don't know the scriptures already. So Jesus searched and found the place it was written. Then he began to read. And when he finished reading, verse 20 says, And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fasting on him. What happened that day? There was something different about the way he read it. Now, this book has been with them in the synagogue. Are you following me? Possibly someone has read it before. But there was something different on this particular day when Jesus read it. When he finished reading, why was it different? Because the Holy Spirit have locked that scripture for him to fulfill. I told you, when you are praying or whatever you are doing, and then the Holy Spirit gives you a word, and that word is clearly from the scriptures. Now what's going on? He is giving you that word to fulfill. Now, it's different when you're just reading the Bible and say, oh, wow, mm, mm, mm. I like this scripture. That's different. You're feeding your heart with knowledge, which is good. But then there's a diff, and this should be happening in your life. That's how you know you're a child of God. That's how you know God loves you. You will be giving words to fulfill. Why scriptures? Because it is written already. So when Jesus... Everybody began to look at him. Verse 21 says, And he began to say unto them, This day, this scripture, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Praise God. What about the other days it was read? That's different. The other days they just found. Now that's why their eyes were all fasting on him. I'm sure, number one, Jesus must have gone against the the, the rules for that day. You <laughs> understand what I'm saying? But when he read it, it resonated in everybody's hearts. And everyone was looking at him, come, what's going on here? Something is different. And Jesus said, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. Why? Because the Holy Spirit gave it to him to declare. Now that very day, Jesus activated every angel that is in that vicinity and every angel for his life. He activated them. It's the same thing with you. When the Holy Spirit gives you a word, don't keep quiet. Now, Jesus didn't take that word. So, okay, mm, thank you. I'll read it later after synagogue time. I'll read it private. No, he read it before everybody. Brothers and sisters, when he said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, he is telling to do exactly what Jesus did here. Take that word. Because what does it mean to be redeemed? It doesn't mean to be attending a redeemed church. Praise God, even though that is good. Now, he said, the ones who have realized that they have been redeemed by God, God. Now, what does it mean to be redeemed? If you have been redeemed, then you will be sustained. How are you sustained? The word of God. Praise God. So when the Holy Spirit gives you words, take those words you have received from your spirit and speak it out. Speak it out. If you have can find it in the scriptures, read it out loud. Don't just read it and be nodding your head. Re carry your Bible and walk around to and fro in your room and begin to speak that scripture out. You step out of your house, the next person you see, you tell the person, hey, this 
is what the Lord has said. And this is what is going to come to pass. This is what you are going to see. Praise God. Just like Jesus didn't hesitate to tell them, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. Brothers and sisters, I tell you the truth. You are about to walk into fulfilling scriptures that have been tailor-made for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bless you today. I declare the hand of the Lord is resting upon you. Oh, you will not rest until you fulfill that which is written concerning you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Have a fruitful day. I'll see you tomorrow.